Ultrasound and infrasound. Sound waves with frequency too low for the human ear to hear are called infrasound. Sound waves with frequency too high for the human ear to hear are called ultrasound. Animals such as whales, elephants, and hippopotamus use infrasound to communicate over distances. Animals such as dogs, bats, birds, and insects can hear ultrasound, but we can't. We got gypped. The acousto-optic effect is the phenomenon which deals with the interaction of light optics and sound acoustics and may be described as the diffraction of light brought about by the sound waves. So what we see is a diffracted light wave and not what we're actually looking at. Our eyes can be fooled. I'll put more information in the description below. So open your eyes and open your mind and come along and learn with me. Example number one of being uh, Manistee, Michigan in the summer of 2016. I'll slow it down with some circles. Okay, that a, thing in the uh, red circle is actually a Sasquatch getting hit by uh, the sound waves and making it look all distorted. Uh, the blue arrows huh? are these two trees. Notice the distance between the two trees and where the trees are lighter because they push the sound waves off that other tree to make reflection on the bigger We're tree and to make it look like it's hollow. Dango thinks he found a bear track, but what he found was the front of a Sasquatch track, just the toes and the, the front pad. And behind us, while we're waiting here, there are things going on in the tree line behind there. I realize that, but uh, those aren't our subjects. For now, let's have another video. Our subjects in the red circle, Dango and Jared are about to walk up to him. Jared's about ready to trip and almost face plant into a Sasquatch. The tree behind them is reflecting off the other tree in front of them, creating an illusion of being hollow, which, you know, <laughs> it can't be hollow all the way up, and it's certainly not hollow at all. They're hiding right behind that tree and between the other tree. Again, those blue arrows are showing you the distance between the smaller tree and the bigger tree. The bigger tree is not hollow. The subject is in red. The green dot on the bottom kind of looks like a forearm and a hand. In this close-up, you can see supposedly in the tree that's hollow and there's a forearm and arm and part of a hand draped over at the top of that is that odd looking Sasquatch that's kind of looks like foam rubber or something where it's getting hit by sound on the bottom there's a baby up in the black part of that tree that's supposedly supposed to be looking hollow keep your eyes on there you'll see some subjects in there This should be where the sound waves are coming from. In the blue, there's one that's uh, kind of sort of showing its eyes. It's bent over getting uh, hit with the, the infrasound or the ultrasound as much as it possibly can and distorting it. 
the uh, subjects in the green you can see a little bit better there's a baby and there's another one under there okay on to example two of Barry County Michigan 2019 hike um, there's a whole bunch of stills here and a lot to see. I'll explain what I can. Basically I've set up a little red dots next to the subjects. The subjects are going to at first appear to be tree growth or tree knots. Pay attention, they are not tree growth or tree knots. They, they unmorph, I guess you could say. They uncloak whatever you want to call it and then they go back uh, that's self-explanatory I'll explain it as I go here as I'm getting closer to these subjects uh, by the red dots there I also notice the uh, almost the prism like round sound waves that are around these subjects that are that are everywhere it's the it's the infrasound or the ultrasound that's doing it and uh, it's pretty easy to see in some stills Pay attention to these subjects as the leaves clear and you can see them a little better as they uncloak. If you haven't seen this before, it's really amazing. Right about now they're starting to uncloak and take a familiar shape. Right here you can see him pretty well, his head and his hands and his legs wrapped around the tree. And wait to see what he's looking at. Pay attention to not only the two red dots kind of in the middle, there's one on the left. There's a subject over there. The subject on the right is hitting the subject on the left with infrasound. Watch.
subjects are near every red dot. In a minute here you're going to see that funny looking tree branch looking thing that's all twisted around is actually a leg and a foot. Subject on the right crawling down the tree, uncloaked, hitting the twisty looking foot thing. Subject on the left with infrasound. Just watch. These are some of the frames you can really see some of the sound waves and uh, some of the, the discoloration and the, the circles that they make while it's hitting the subject that is a twisted looking foot and a leg. And yeah, it distorts the perception of the size and everything. It's it's just, it's weird. It's just, it, well, just look. I added these animated sound waves to show you and you almost don't even need them. You can see where the other real waves are also. This is a really nice clear shot of the subject on the tree too. Example number three, one I just put up recently, upside down baby Bigfoot and cloaking mother. Here on National Forest, Michigan, 7-2017. Uh, this one's just plain easy to see. I'll point out what I can. Um, it's it's one of the clearest, most obvious ones I have. And the baby's in green and the mother's cloaking in the red circle. Other subject in the red circle is blurry on the right there and is responsible for the infrasound blasting the mother and a little bit too low as a matter of fact and doesn't hit the baby. Okay, you can clearly see her holding the baby upside down right here. She's hiding behind it while she's getting hit 
with infrasound. Well, she's cloaking. She's getting hit too low. All the blurry stuff is going below her. And the, the baby, you can see clearly. Very can. Okay, this is example number four. Uh, the clip from here on National Forest, Michigan, again on 7 uh, 2017. Uh, this one isn't probably the best example in the world, but this one is the one that kind of opened my eyes to why is this blurry in this spot and, and uh, really kind of got me going on, uh, you know, this whole effect thing here. Uh, here, I'll show you. Yeah, there's some uh, Bigfoot bundled up in there that you can't even see or hardly make out what they are, but that's not the entire subject. I mean to notice right here these hands in the red and the, the, the blurry face in the blue. Okay, blue is a blurry face above a set of hands uh, which are circled in red below it. And uh, over to the right are the bundle of Sasquatch that are uh, almost undistinguishable because they're cloaking really well. Uh, you can make out a brow and some hands and some body parts, but you really can't make out what it is exactly. But uh, the subject in the tree is really interesting with the hands and the blurry face behind it though. Also notice the blur does not move with the camera. It stays right where uh, the face is no matter where the camera moves so it's not something on the lens. Example number five, Barry County, Michigan, 2019 hike. Uh, this one has really, really good effects of the, uh, the sound waves coming in, them distorting color, light, and everything around it. Um, you can clearly see it, and I'll point everything out. Subjects are by the red dot. There's also a subject on the left that you might see in a minute. Subjects by the red dot. You can clearly see sound waves coming from here. These are animated sound waves and I'll show you where the real sound waves are.
right in through about here and you can see the distortion and the colors and whatnot and the foliage coming from the sound waves and below that um, is the juvenile uh, hunched over uh, below the adult that's doing the sound waves down there in the, um, the bottom of the tree right there. The blue just shows where the sound waves are mostly taking effect. Subject is on right now that I'm you know moving around. Example number six, probably the trickiest one they pulled off um, and hardest to explain, but I'll try. Uh, this clip was from Manistee National Forest, Michigan in uh, 2016. We had the whole team up there. There was about five of us up there. And this would be the most confusing look right here is uh, looking back on our way back. Um, there's a big chunk of light underneath the subject there that just they did a really good job of it. Let me show you what they did. There's subjects under the tree stump, probably two or three of them, and they're the ones that are doing the infrasound and making all that funny looking light underneath the other subject that's staring right at you. But, this clip doesn't really show a whole lot. Why? Well, I had to go back a little bit before we got to this clip. This is another angle of the subject right here. You can even see the hair floating off the head. Hair all the way down the arm and shoulder. This is a short original clip of the, the subject in those two angles. This is another stump we passed by and another, another subject hidden really well. You can see a nose and an eye in there and a little bit of an outline of his body. He's cloaking really well underneath this stump. You'll see him in a little bit. This is a close up. Okay, this is kind of lengthy. This is uh, 276 stills. Most of them are about three seconds apiece. Some are uh, stretched out a little bit longer. There's a lot to see. I'll try to explain what you're seeing. Keep your eyes on the fallen tree to the right.
Okay, the main subject is by the red dot. In the parentheses over there is uh, what well, looks like grass or hair or fur hanging over on the side and it changes color and shape quite frequently. Keep your eyes on that. It's hard to concentrate on everything. There's subjects in the background also, I realize that, but uh, it's hard to point out everything and, and really uh, study everything on here. But if you want to go back and look, they pop in and out of the background quite often. Hey, here's an um, outline of the subject in the stump or the fallen tree here and where the head is and uh, you can see the right hand pretty well. The legs and the other uh, left hand is up underneath all that grass, I think. Uh, coming up on the left in the distance a little bit, there's some more subjects that are uh, in the trees and the other fallen tree or stump is also up on the left. Keep your eye on that below it and the subjects to the left of that by the red dots. Okay, main subject in the red circle there changes shape and moves around a little bit. Keep your eyes there. Red dot, the subjects underneath the stump, they move around a little bit.
I didn't use a, every single available frame, just the ones that are in focus. Uh, the cam operator is walking, and sometimes they're blurry, so I just got the ones that are really the clearest, and you can tell what the subjects are doing. Okay, on the left in the circle is a subject. Uh, I think he's about ready to leave and then he changes his mind and ducks down. Um, still keep your eyes underneath that stump there. The subjects are moving around. Uh, the red dot all the way over on the right, kind of in the center of the picture. There's that subject in the trees there. And uh, keep your eyes there too. Okay, below the stump you can see a little bit of eye sign in the circle, the circle above it, behind it, you can see a little bit of a Sasquatch peeking around a tree right there, shoulders and face. And over to the right, there's a little dot, and there's another subject over there peeking around a tree. Yeah, a lot of Sasquatches in Amish country in Manistee, Michigan, huh? <laughs> Okay, here in the circle is the subject standing next to the fallen tree. Um, notice the bottom of the body disappear as we get closer. The red dots by the subject's head, you can see its hair blowing in the breeze below it. Now there's more missing body and more light. By the green dots are subjects moving around. You can keep an eye on that.
This is where the sound waves are coming from. Busted. Subject in the red circle making the sound waves. Then he ducks back under. Example number seven was this year here on National Forest, Michigan on uh, 6-15-21. First I'll show you the stock video clip. Of course the red circle there is a cloaking Sasquatch where you can't see any details but that's the effect that uh, the show is all the way around it where it uh, just kind of absorbs color around it also and details. To the right there, there's a lot of dark gassy looking things going on there. That's uh, them trying to cloak and they're trying to uh, change the color of everything and make everything dark and the camera can't adjust to it. And the camera and them are fighting back and forth. In the southern now, you can start seeing the uh, juvenile Sasquatch and a couple of the trees there. Um, their effect together when they bundle together uh, like that is just a make it look like they're multiplied and make it look like it's just a bunch of odd shapes but uh, unfortunately for them uh, this effect wasn't 100% because the sun was hitting them just right but uh, you can see that in the other effect of the ones here to the right which uh, look like a bunch of gassy smoke objects and whatnot. Well, if you slow down or stop on some of these, you can pick out individuals, but uh, it pretty much just gives them a kind of a glob effect. Uh, it's sort of really amazing how they can do it, but I don't think the, uh, the juveniles are quite as capable as the adults. The mother, Sasquatch with the baby there and the, the red there, it, it just totally, it totally messes up everything around her when the effect's going on and uh, you really can't make out what it is, but yeah, that's not natural and doesn't really look, <laughs> it doesn't really look right, does it? Blue area really shows off that effect. Next, on part two, extreme examples, walls of sound, and translucent Sasquatch. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.